Welcome everyone to our Wheel and Anchor webinar this morning. Today's topic, Newfoundland's Northwest, a uh, program we are very excited about because it's our first uh, program wholly inside Canada uh, and hopefully one of uh, more to come. Uh, I know that uh, there's a lot of interest, a lot of feedback I've gotten from our members about um, uh, doing uh, uh, more programs in Canada in context of what's happening all around the world now it does uh, seem like a good idea to stay close to home so um, I just will address that on that note um, you know we're all very much aware of the challenging times that we're facing in particularly those of us in the travel industry uh, and uh, at, uh, in speaking to a number of our members we've decided to continue on with our webinars because um, yeah frankly people are enjoying them and they, they you know would like to have something to look forward to so that's uh, that's why we're we're going to proceed on with these and we've got some more exciting ones coming up so without further ado um, just let me give you a little bit of background about wheel and anchor for those of you who have not joined one of our webinars before or if you're new to our community we are about bringing travelers together so it's the fundamental philosophy that I started wheel and anchor with back a couple of years ago the idea being that um, we are travelers and we are travelers with a like-minded interest in going a little bit beyond what normal uh, tour groups are sort of doing. And certainly we see uh, on our trips this, some of the same kinds of things, but we try to go a little bit deeper. And more importantly, we want to share the experience with other people who have a like-minded view of travel. Um, and that's really what we're all about at Wheel and & Anchor. And I have a personal goal for uh, all of our members, which is that you be well-traveled and well-connected. And, you know, what does that mean? Um, well, well-traveled, I think it's, it goes beyond just ticking off uh, destinations on a bucket list and I think that for a lot of people that's that's important right you want to see as much as you can um, but it's about getting you know inside of the the culture and the customs and traditions and the food and the wine and of different countries um, and, and sharing that and becoming connected in the process of that connected to other people the more that we learn about our the world around us I think the better a place that we can make it so um, that's that's my goal for all of our members so um, let me introduce our team this morning um, who's on our, our webinar so myself my name is Gordon I'm the founder of Wheel and Anchor I think many of you um, uh, we've uh, either met in person or uh, perhaps talked on the phone before um, Joel Curry is my co-founder and provides our technical support on the webinar um, Paula Zarnick um, is in the background as well this morning and she is our senior trip specialist and is most likely the person who will pick up the phone um, if you call our office and our special guest this morning Ed English um, from right out on the on the rock out in Newfoundland this morning uh, he will be the host of our program um, so I'm, I'm very excited Ed thank you for joining us um, and sharing with us a little bit about what we can expect to see on this wonderful trip um, so our plan for today, as per usual, um, you all that have joined us this morning are fascinated about Newfoundland and uh, particularly the Northwest Coast, which is um, very different than the other part of Newfoundland. I'll talk about that in a, in a little bit in a second. And I'm here um, together with Ed to be your guide uh, and your and fellow explorer. I must say, I am not uh, as familiar with this part of Newfoundland. Um, but I've spent some time with Ed and his colleagues uh, to um, to um, really get to know what this part of Newfoundland is all about. So that's where we're headed in September of 2020. Inshallah, as they say in uh, the Arab world, God willing, uh, that, uh, uh, that things will allow us to go there. But that's the plan, and we're very excited about it. So diving right in, um, I think we're all familiar with the map of Newfoundland. Uh, uh, you know, it's uh, it's always funny because you look at the map of Canada and, you know, it's the second largest country in the world and Newfoundland sort of sits, sits off at the end as this little tiny island and yet it is a huge, huge place. Um, and so that's part of the reason that we've designed this trip the way that we have um, because we wanted to take in um, uh, a little bit of uh, this very, very special part of the province on the West Coast. Uh, the majority of people people in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador um, live or almost half of them in the St. John's area which is to the bottom right on this Avalon Peninsula and then you've got this vast area um, that uh, has some some breathtaking scenery wildlife um, all kinds of neat stuff 
and uh, you know, one of the things Ed's going to share with us a little bit about is Lonceau Meadows. Um, and, uh, you know, the Vikings showed up there a long time before, you know, of course, our American friends always lay claim to being the ones that Christopher Columbus discovered America, but I think the Vikings got here long before he did. So anyway, um, he, you can hear lots about Newfoundland and some of the sites that we're going to see um, and Gromor National Park. And I know that, you know, anybody who's seen the commercials about Newfoundland, uh, that they do such a great job about and you see these spectacular scenes and that's all part of our itinerary. So let's take a look, look at the map before I'm going to sort of on over to Ed, who's going to give us some of the details that we can expect to see. Our point of departure, our point of arrival, I suppose, in, in Newfoundland is going to be Deer Lake, um, which is the, the airport that serves Gromore National Park, as well as the city of Cornerbrook. Uh, and from there, we're going to be heading up uh, to uh, Rocky Harbor, uh, where we're going to spend a few days in and around the area of Gromore. And then before zipping up to the very northern tip of Newfoundland um, at um, Carpoon, if I got the pronunciation right, Ed, <laughs> and then making our way uh, back around and back down to Deer Lake. So let's take a look at the the day by day itinerary, and we're going to fly into to Deer Lake. And again, this is really the the access point for the western part of Newfoundland, uh, and. We will likely, as you will see in the brochure that we'll be sending out to everybody uh, that has shown interest in the program, um, the, the ideal flights are on WestJet out of Toronto for those coming from Toronto or points west uh, because um, the flight arrives in the afternoon. So that's we've, we've oriented the trip around that schedule. There are other flights available, um, either through Halifax or on Air Canada, but it just arrives really late at night. So we're kind of recommending the WestJet flight um, and all the details will be in there. And then we're going to get picked up and you're going to meet this fabulous gentleman, Ed. Uh, you're going to meet everybody at the airport in Deer Lake. And um, where do we head for there? We head up to, uh, we, we head straight up to, to Gromorne, I guess. We do, yeah. I, I'm going to insult the French speakers amongst us by saying Grossmorn is what it's called locally. Grosmorn. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, see, there you go. I. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to sound like a local, you'll call it gross morn and let the French people wince when they when they hear you. <laughs> okay. See, even I call it grow morn. Okay, so it's gross morn. There we go. <laughs> First correction of the day. So, so it's the main airport on the west coast. People either fly into St. John's if they're doing the east coast to Newfoundland or you're like with the west coast. And I, I was born just about 15, 20 minutes away from there near Cornerbrook. Uh, so then just to give you a feel for or how far we'll be going from Grossmorn or from Deer Lake to the border of Grossmorn is only like 15 minutes, so it's not a long drive before we're in the park. And then the park itself is gorgeous, it's all a little bit of at the beginning twisty, windy roads around the fjords and the inlet. It's the, the, the slide you have on there now is the opening to what's called Bond Bay, it's the main bay in the park. And it's interesting because of all the Gulf of St. Lawrence, Bond Bay has the deepest water, so it's, oh. it's a what happened in Newfoundland about 10 or 12,000 years ago when the ice age ended, all the glaciers melted and the land that was traveling on the whole time rebounded up when the weight of the ice left. So you're traveling on the, the coastal plain that came up, so you know, nice easy drive going north. But what happened was all the fjords that were carved by the glaciers, some of them became landlocked like the one we'll be exploring the next day, and then some of them are still slightly connected or completely connected to the ocean. And that's what Bombay is. It's not quite landlocked like Western Bhutan and some of the others. Are. Right. So we'll we'll be going through the park, and you know another 20 minutes, half hour drive will get us to Rocky Harbor, and that's the picture you have there. And then that's kind of the main town, the biggest population being still on a humble population, but it is the main town of the park. So there's lots to see around there. Out on the point there, you can see it to the left of the sunset is is a lighthouse. That's uh, one of the main Attractions, Lobster Cove and Lighthouse, where Lobster we're Cove. yeah, where we're staying is right in from the dock there. That the, the, the pictures in your you look at the front window of the hotel and that's what. So that's our view out of the front of the hotel. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. So so we'll spend a couple of nights in Rocky Harbor, uh, and uh, and it's it's this is this is really the gateway to to Gross Morn in that case. So the, the, the following days when I guess we get into these, these spectacular fjords, which when I see these photos, it always reminds me a little bit of Norway, um, you know, where I've done quite a bit of traveling and I just can't get over how beautiful this is. 
know, absolutely. This is the, the main boat for I mean, it, it's the icon for Grossmore. Grossmore is the UNESCO World Heritage Site because of the geology of, of the park primarily. And this is one of the most spectacular parts of the geology. So we have about a three kilometer flat, easy walk into the boat. And then we jump on the boat and we spend about two and a half hours going up into the fjord. And it's beautiful because when you're getting on the boat, you're, you're in a big lake. It, I, I should clarify, in, in Newfoundland, we can call a lake that can be 30 miles long a pond. So it's southwest of a pond, but it's 10, 15, 20 miles long probably. So when you get in the boat, you're at the in the lake and it, you can see the opening to the fjord, but you don't see the full extent of the fjord, which is really, really great so that as you're going in you're turning and twisting and, and the fjord is opening up before you until you head right into the very the very you know the apex of it and the lake itself is a remarkable uh, thing it's what they call an ultra oligotrophic lake it's very pure pristine water you, you, you're talking about you know this land called the rock above the lake there's very little soil in the mountain so the rain that falls doesn't pick up many nutrients and just drains into the lake so there's very few nutrients to keep anything alive in the lake and the turnover of water there is very, very slow. So it, it, it's very pure water, hardly any life in it. The salmon and things like that don't have much to eat there. So it's, it's an interesting piece of water apart from the spectacular view you see. How amazing. So super clear, I guess, and... and Oh yeah, no, absolutely clear. And it's not at all unusual when you're going through here to see moose or bear along the sides of the, of the pond as you're, as you're walking in. There are fewer now, because I, I, maybe you don't know about what happened. Newfoundland, we introduced the moose about 100, well, maybe 120 years ago, 115 years ago, as a food supply. <clears throat> and they've grown to be about 115,000 of them now. And what they were, because they're essentially a pet species, I mean, they're introduced and shouldn't be there. Right. Where they were tested in the park, they weren't allowed to hunt them. So there used to be too many in the park. My record driving through the park was seeing 52 moose in half an hour. So, Jesus, yeah. <laughs> that's remarkable. So you had to be careful. Now they they've allowed hunting, so you don't see as many many in the park. But what it's done is it's preserved the park because they were destroying the park. Because sure. of course, yeah. They, 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 they like a day, and that this, was just, that, that was yeah. This but is the problem when you introduce a yeah a species like that, like that that is as you say, it's not not necessarily endemic, and next thing you know, it causes all the problems. So, but we're going to cross our fingers anyway that we get to see uh, that we get to see some moose uh, um, while while we're there in Grossmore, and this is undoubtedly going to be um, a highlight of the day, I guess. So from here, we drive. This is where we begin the part where we drive up to Lonso Meadows to Carpoon um, in the north. And you know the distances in Newfoundland are deceiving because it's you know it's a, it's a it's a big province. I, I think the the Trans Canada from St. John's until all the way to the to to you get on the the the, the ferry is is well over a thousand kilometers, um, even though it doesn't sort of seem like it on the map. But w what characterizes the scenery that we're going to see along the way, and or or any stops that we might wait make as we make our way up to Lanso Meadows? What we're going to do, just again, to give people scale so they'll understand overall, from Deer Lake Airport to the tip is about 500 kilometers. So we're driving yeah. 500, 500 back just to give you a scale for the whole trip. Uh, this day, as we head to Lance Meadows, we're going to drive what I referred to earlier, that fat, flat coastal plain. So as we're driving north to Long Range Mountains, which are actually the end of the Appalachian Mountains. So the Appalachian Mountains start in Georgia. And the last rock in Newfoundland, is, in front of my life, on Carpoon Island, is the last rock of the Appalachian Mountains if you head up through North America. Ah, neato. Okay. Yeah, so we're driving next to the Appalachians on one side, the oceans on the other side. That time of year, it's not unusual as we're driving, we might see whales because we're that close. Last September, when I was driving up, I was behind a tour bus, and the, the ocean was about oh, 50 feet or 100 feet away from me, and there were two humpback whales about 20 feet offshore, and I don't think anybody on the bus found because I thought, you're going to see the tail, like, come on. And someone goes, oh, my God, there's whales right there. And I never saw the bright lights tonight. So, but people, if you're watching, you should see whales. We'll also yeah. pass. My grandfather was captain of a ship that wrecked there. It's a famous shipwreck. It was 101 years ago now. So we'll, we'll, if we get a chance, we'll stop and visit that along the way. And then we're in and out of little fishing villages along the way, all the way up to Lansom Meadows, which, as you say, was, you know, 500 years before Columbus, the Vikings were living in Newfoundland. And it's, it's done really well. They've, they've got the original remains of the sod huts there, but then they've got the ones you see here, which are the recreated sod huts. 
you get to go in, they have reenactors there, and I gotta say, they do a fabulous job. Like, they're in That's character, come out of character if they want to, you can ask them questions. They're not just actors, they're, you know, virtual scholars on the history of it and how things work. It. So it's fascinating from physical, and, and when you're standing there, you're just like, why would they pick this spot? But it does make sense. And, you know, we'll talk about it when we're there. Why yeah, 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 I'm sure. That I'm, spot I'm, I'm, America. I'm sure we'll hear all about it. And again, this is one of these sites that is, you know, for for particular well, for history buffs, but I think just generally because um, I think we, uh, Joel and I were talking about the, uh, the Heritage um, Canada series that they used to run. Um, the Canada Post, I think, used to run, and and they would talk about this. And it, it's it's you know we we sort of underestimate the significance of this settlement. Um, as to the whole evolution of of, um, of Canadian history of North American history. So, now when we're up there, we're just, we're staying at the, at the at the it's the Lighthouse Inn, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So after we tour the site, then we'll head over to the to the island. It's a deserted island. It's a big island. It's seven kilometers long by a kilometer and a half wide. We take you out by Zodiac out to the lighthouse. You've got a choice if you want. I don't know what what people may want, but you can get dropped at the near end of the island and do a walk the length of the island or take a boat right to, to the inn. So it's, it's beautiful for walking. We get people coming from all over the world say, that's why I came back to do the walk down the island. It's so gorgeous there. That time of year, we're a little late for the best of icebergs, but it's not unusual for us to see icebergs even in September. So keep your fingers crossed that we could see an iceberg. I will be astounded if we don't see whales, humpback in particular, and possibly orca. We get orca around there frequently as well. And they all usually hang around in September. Uh, the pit. That's the main inn. You can see the helipad there on the left. So you can go and stand on the helipad and just sit and watch the whales. The icebergs that time of year, of course, you might get the northern lights as well. So I've been out there with guests and literally we've spent the entire night wrapped up in, in our quilt just watching the northern wow. lights there. So some will be in this house just to the right of that house, hidden by the rock. It's the second house. And that's where some others will be staying. Five houses in each, or five rooms in each house, sorry. But yeah, we'll be out there for, for the day, uh, go out there for the night, spend the night, and then the next day wandering around the island. And wandering around this this Carpoon Island. And as you say, this isn't the ideal iceberg time of the year. Icebergs tend to come more in the springtime. But um, yeah, maybe there'll be one still floating around there. You never know. <laughs> well, it, it, yeah, it, just, just to explain, they come from the north. And we get them first right. because this what you're looking at there is the northernmost point in Newfoundland. So we do have the longest iceberg season. So most places in Newfoundland, down around St. John's, the Swilling Gate would say, you know, in iceberg in July. I, I do a count every July 1st when I'm there from the helipad, and normally I'll see two to three dozen by the, on the 1st of July, and I'll still see three or four maybe by the 1st of August. And then through August, there's usually a couple of the massive ones that have been big enough to withstand, you know, the, the heat of the summer. So it's not unusual, and we are indeed at that because we're so far north. Well, that would be... That would yeah. be uh, undoubtedly an amazing sight if we were able to see whales and the northern lights and icebergs. I mean, again, uh, anyway, we're crossing our fingers. I know that on our wheel and anchor trips, we do tend to get lucky with these things. So We've got a zodiac, so we can jump in. If they're anywhere within range, we can get up to a mini zodiac. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. And that's, that's, that's part of the adventure, what I like what I, when, we were, when we were talking about um, organizing this tour, I said we want to do something that gets us and to feel the wild ruggedness of of Newfoundland, and this is this is the epitome of it right there. So, um, yeah. So we'll spend uh, spend uh, two nights up here um, at the uh, at this uh, wonderful lighthouse uh, in location, which I'm super excited about. Um, and then we uh, and then we'll turn around and make the drive back again south. Uh, and I, get, I take it we'll stop in at a few of those fishing villages that we that we didn't see on the way uh, on the drive northbound. Um, uh, anything else uh, that you can point out as a particular interest that we'll um, we'll get to see, Ed? One well, one of the subtle little things, but I love September, particularly up north out on the island, but anywhere along here is is a good berry season. So you, everybody's always out wandering. When I go for a walk with the guests. It starts off as an organized walk, and then it turns into a grazing session for everybody who's wondering. You've got what, what are called baked apples, which have nothing to do with apples and, and nothing to do with being baked, but they're baked apples, one, you know, the two words put together. And they're a, a really rare berry. You might know them as cloudberry. And, and oh. they're 
strawberry. Yes. Yeah. 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 So they look like a, a um, like a blackberry, but you only get one per plant. The plants only grow in a certain terrain in a certain climate, and that's why they cost about seventy dollars a gallon. And but the island is great for them. So as we're going along, people can be picking and eating and having little snacks of berries along the way. Yeah, those. That's exactly the kind of experiences that we like to do. Is again these things because they only grow sort of in more northern climes, right? I mean, we don't see them in Ontario. I know it's only in. In Absolutely. And the other thing that should be happening again, they don't tell us the schedule until each summer, but we should have the food fishery going then. So you should be eating berries that we picked on the island for, you know, dessert for breakfast, that sort of stuff. All the jams will be made from the local berries. And the, the cod you're eating should be coming out of the water right around the island because that's prime time for the, for the food fishery under normal circumstances. So with a bit of luck and maybe depending on the time is the time that they allow us to go fishing because they allow certain days of the week, different times, sometimes this weekend, whatever. We may be able to get next week catch a fish ourselves. Oh, well, that would that be fun. brilliant. And I realize all these things are sort of subject to, subject to, but this is the idea. This is exactly why um, we are, are working with Ed and uh, his team, because they will give us as an authentic Newfoundland experience as we can possibly uh, get, obviously, weather and other conditions and um, various factors um, yeah, I'm taking those into account. So that's, uh, that's marvelous. And so, um, we'll spend, uh, our, our last night after some full, full days exploring this Northwest coast, we'll stay, um, not far, uh, from, uh, the airport in Deer Lake, um, so that we can have a, uh, a relaxing start to our, our journey back home from, from wherever we came. So I'm going to go through a few of the logistical details of our, uh, of our program, and then uh, we'll get into the questions. And I see a few have uh, come in already. Um, so this program, as we said, is scheduled to take place um, November, uh, September 9th to the 14th. That's this coming September. Uh, and uh, the price is there listed in Canadian dollars. Um, so twenty nine fifty plus um, plus um, Justin Trudeau share um, makes uh, the prices there in double and uh, a fairly reasonable single upcharge if you uh, do prefer a single room for those that um, for those of our single travelers. As usual, what that includes it includes pretty much all of well all of the transportation that's on a, on a, on our trip. Uh, the um, so our, our transportation by um, by minibus uh, and boat where applicable um, we'll have accommodation in these uh, different places including the very unique um, carpoon life lighthouse inn um, and our sightseeing and uh, courtesy of ed uh, and of course all of our taxes service charges and all the usual things as usual we try to put make this as inclusive as possible um, and uh, you'll, of course, as I say, have Ed as your guide and host um, for the stay in Newfoundland. Um, excluded from our programs is as per usual, so airfare we do extra just uh, to allow for those that are coming from different parts of Canada, um, and of course insurance and any other beverages and so on um, is uh, the usual, our usual exclusions. Talking about airfare, as I mentioned at the outset, uh, our recommendation is the WestJet flight, so we've built the program sort of around that schedule. There aren't a ton of flights going in and out of Deer Lake, um, but uh, we expect that uh, the pricing now is around five, six hundred dollars for that flight from Toronto, uh, and uh, a uh, sort of modest upcharge for those coming from the West Coast. And we, of course, can give you information about those connections. Um, if you are interested, if you are coming from any of those other cities, um, so if you do have questions about it, program at all um, of course um, that go beyond the ones that we're going to answer right now um, you can contact us by either emailing me uh, at gordon at wheel and or uh, my colleague paula um, who can be reached uh, at bookings at wheel and or you can just give us a call we're always happy to receive your calls particularly these days when we're not getting a lot of phone calls <laughs> We actually are getting a lot of phone calls, um, but uh, so so uh, anyway, we're we're all remaining optimistic. So let me um, now take some of your questions. Um, so if you do have a question that we haven't already um, that we're not haven't already answered, then we'll try and do that for you. Um, Luke asked, um, uh, and this is a question for you, Ed: Is it going to be too cold to uh, to take a dip in the water in Gross Morn? Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> First of all, can you swim in, in a Western Brook Pond? Is it allowed to swim? Yeah, there's, there's no rule against it. And, and it's, it's not a question of how cold the water is. It's a question of how soft loose it is more than anything about weather. <laughs> okay. But where we're staying our last night at the northern end of the park, that bay there is it's called shallow bay. So it's pure white sand for kilometers, beautiful white sand beach, mm. very, very shallow, hence the name shallow bay, and warms up quite well. So that can be pleasant for swimming in during the summer. It, in September, the water is actually warmer than it would be in July in the ocean because it's oh, wow. warming up, right? So I would rather swim the 5th of September than the 5th of July. Uh, and some people do want to swim in the Carpoon because they say, I want to swim in the northernmost point that we're going. So. Yeah, exactly. Well, that would be me. I would definitely want to swim there. That would be definitely on my agenda. So, well, that's good news then. So, yeah, there's a chance. That... <laughs> okay, perfect. Well, actually, that brings us to the next question from Judy, which is what the weather is uh, likely to be like. And I, I understand that this time of the year, that time of the year, is early September is actually one of the best times because you, you don't get time. Tons of rain, although you never know, I guess, out there. But um, what, 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 what should we be yeah, expecting? No, early September can be very great weather. It's, what happens is we close down the, the inn out on the island usually around the third week of September because once you get into kind of the fall storm season, you know, they start in Florida and they work their way up the eastern seaboard, and Newfoundland is where they go to die. So they, when they hit that cold Labrador current, that tends to take the power away from them. But we right. can't get stormy days in September. But overall, no, it, it should be pleasant weather. In terms of rain, it can happen. I, I did an analysis of the last 30 years of weather, and I compared mm -hmm. Deer Lake Airport to Toronto Airport, just, just for comparison. And I think it was Deer Lake from May to September was three degrees cooler than Toronto, not as windy as Toronto, and had 18% more rain from May to September. So, you know. Which is, which is really negligible in the sense that you know, for being an environment like that. That's, uh, yeah. that's brilliant. Yeah, the prevailing winds in the summer come off the continent. They're southwest winds, so they're warm winds coming up off North America and blowing over Newfoundland. So if, if, as long as those happen, which they usually do in early December, we're fine. If it turns around and comes off the water because the storm has gone up through the Atlantic... We're going to get wet. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to get wet. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, I got a question here from David who wants to know if I want to continue on to St. John's afterward, how can I do that and how long does it take? <laughs> it's a bit of a drive down to St. John's, I think, from uh, from Deer Lake, yeah? Uh, it, it'll be about a six-hour drive. I think it's like 600 kilometers, 620 kilometers, something okay. like that. We can certainly organize rental cars if he's interested. We can do that and we can arrange it so he doesn't pay much or, or any or a low drop charge. Because the rental cars don't like you picking them up in air in, in Deer Lake, driving them 600 kilometers away and leaving them because then they have trouble getting them back. Yeah, so, getting them back. Yeah. It, because we're 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 a company, we tend to get better deals and and you know forgiveness for that. So if you okay, well, you do that. your other options. I was going to say your other options are there is a bus that goes daily uh, that goes across from Deer Lake. It would be I don't know, 10 hours, or eight hours, something like that. Uh, and then of course you could fly across. I so you can fly, right, right. You've got provincial provincial airways that has uh, flights in or inside of uh, Newfoundland. So, so you do have options. Uh, and uh, I mean, personally, I think the drive across the province would be be amazing. I mean, there's a there's a lot of wilderness and stuff, but um, still should be still should be quite beautiful. Yeah, it it, it, it absolutely is. Uh, you know, what I say about the Trans Canada through Newfoundland is kind of like the 401. It wasn't intended to to be the scenic. It was intended to get you there. So we normally encourage people to get off it and go explore the coast. Like I don't want people to think driving across is in and out of little fishing village. It's, it's not. It's a highway to get you there. But it's right. not. Good point. It's a really unique stuff as you go across. And I'm happy to have that conversation with them about. Yeah, perfect. Okay, okay that's good. Okay. That's good. So, so David, you've got you got you got the heads up from Ed. If uh, if you need some extra help planning that, we'll uh, we'll take care of that for you. Uh, I got another question here from Karen about, uh, will you run a second trip if not in September? Well, we are actually planning another trip um, with Ed and his team that will take place in the summer of 2021. It'll be a longer trip around Newfoundland. Um, and, uh, but, and if this trip, um, uh, if we, and we have actually quite a bit of interest in this trip. So if it does sell out, we may run another trip right after it, subject to 
um, there being space. I mean, there's, uh, you have to imagine in this part of the country, in this part of Newfoundland, um, there, it's not like there's tons and tons of hotels. So we are somewhat limited by, um, by the accommodation there. We're lucky that we could secure the spaces that we did, um, thanks to Ed and his team. Uh, uh, and so, um, so anyway, the answer to the question is we're definitely going back to Newfoundland. This will not be our first, our, our only trip. We will, um, I'm hoping to do this um, a couple of times a year because uh, again, so many people want to see it, and frankly, I highly recommend it. Newfoundland is truly, truly uh, a wonderful space. Um, then we have a question from Sandy. How many spaces on this trip? At the moment, we are holding space for 12, if I'm not mistaken. So this is a small group trip. We're not, uh, um, largely because of the places we're staying, particularly Carpoon, there's not a, a ton of space in, in, in these little, uh, uh, little hotels. Um, uh, so uh, we are holding space for 12 and, uh, and I think we have a, a few people who've already jumped the gun and, and booked if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, um, it's a good idea if you are interested, uh, to give us a call probably sooner than later. Um, and as I say, we will, um, take a deposit from everybody and it's our, our current policy in the context of a uh, coronavirus that's going on right now is, is that, um, between now and I will have to double check it with Paula, but for at least the next month um, until we get some clarity on where this is all going, um, your deposit will be refundable uh, until at least uh, the 1st of May. So I'll clarify that, but um, if you do have a question about that, please um, let us know on, on booking. Um, so good, I don't see any other questions at all. So, but if you do have a question, uh, we're always here to answer them. I wanna take this uh, opportunity to thank um, Ed for joining us and giving us some great insight into Newfoundland. He is going to be a terrific host. You're going to enjoy his company on this trip. Um, so um, thanks again, Ed, from out in Newfoundland. Any final words? Well, you're putting the pressure on me by saying I'll be a great host. Thanks. <laughs> I was convinced of that from the first time we spoke. So <laughs> one thing I will mention that we didn't talk about but we are doing some theater and music and things like that along the way a couple of evenings. There well. you go. So apart from the team, we're going to do the cultural side of things as well. So you certainly can see, and, and, and like the theater there is, is absolutely fabulous. Travels the world. I had a couple on a tour from Australia and they went to the theater there in Gross Morn. And, and I met them when they came out and they were laughing. I said, was the show good? And they said, it must have been good. You were laughing. They said, that's not why we're laughing. They said, the first actor walked out and said, I feel like we know him. Was it like somebody from home who looked at it? And then the second person came out and they went, no, we know them too. And it turned out the place in Gross Moore had been in the, um, oh my God, uh, down in Australia somewhere doing their, their play. And they had actually seen one of their plays down there and like five years before and had no idea it was from Newfoundland, but it was the Newfoundland actors from Gross Moore had gone down. So it's great to be able to enjoy the evening. Well, oh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, well, that's, I know that's part of it. And, you know, New Newfoundland has a very special culture. So, uh, uh, so uh, we, we look forward to seeing that part of it as well. So um, thanks again, Ed, Ed for your insights uh, on this, on this magnificent trip. Uh, and thanks all for joining us uh, this morning. And uh, again, we look forward to hearing your questions and uh, hoping that you'll join us. And uh, thank you again for taking the time. And uh, we'll see you all very soon.